and he said that the mysteries to unlock the secrets of the universe is hidden within our bodies. This isn't some ancient legend buried in desert dust. This is your DNA right now, hiding a ghost no one saw coming. Deep in the South Pacific, a quiet group of islanders carries traces of something scientists can't explain. Not Neanderthal, not Denisovan, something else, something forgotten. And guess who's already been circling this mystery? Joe Rogan. On the Joe Rogan Experience, topics like this don't just come up, they explode. As we evolve technologically, and biologically, we develop a higher and higher ability to access that information. Imagine Rogan leaning in, wide-eyed, asking, Wait, so there's another human species in our blood we never found bones for? Welcome to the story your history class never told you. The JRE Effect why this mystery grabs us. Joe Rogan's podcast isn't just a show, it's a cultural engine, a place where a UFC fight, a space mission, and ancient DNA can all collide in the same three-hour conversation. The Joe Rogan Experience, or JRE, has a way of making complicated science feel like something you'd talk about over coffee. Not watered down, just real, curious, and relentless. When guests talk about ancient humans or evolution, Rogan doesn't pretend to know it all. He leans in, asks the questions we'd ask, and then lets his guests unravel the answers. That's why this topic fits like a puzzle piece. A third unknown human species found not in fossils, but in the genes of real living people. He's had thinkers, futurists, and scientists. People who break open ideas and let them breathe. Imagine someone on JRE saying, We've discovered genetic traces of a human species we've never physically found. And Rogan blinking in disbelief. That's wild, man. It's that mix of open wonder and raw curiosity that makes this story so gripping. Because it isn't about the past. It's about what's still buried inside us, literally. Who are the Melanesians? To understand the mystery, we need to travel far. Not just across oceans, but back in time. Picture the South Pacific, Thousands of islands scattered like green jewels over endless blue. This is Melanesia, home to millions of people in places like Papua New Guinea, Vanuatu, and the Solomon Islands. They're not cut off from the world. They have cities, villages, languages, over a thousand of them. Their cultures are as deep as their landscapes are lush. But here's what makes them different. Their DNA doesn't quite match the rest of us. It holds an ancient riddle. For over 50,000 years, Melanesians have lived and adapted in some of the most rugged, isolated environments on Earth. They've survived volcanic eruptions, sea level shifts, and centuries of change. And in their genes, scientists started to notice something strange. Something that couldn't be explained by Neanderthals or Denisovans alone. The people of Melanesia aren't just keepers of tradition. They might be keepers of a secret. One written into their blood. Not a myth not a metaphor, a real biological trace of something or someone we never knew existed. And now the hunt begins to figure out who. The DNA. Discovery. Something doesn't add up. It started with numbers that didn't make sense. Back in 2016, a team of geneticists took a closer look at the DNA of Melanesians. At first, they expected the usual suspects, Neanderthal and Denisovan traces. That's normal. Most people outside of Africa carry a little of each, thanks to ancient encounters. But Melanesians had more, and something else entirely. Ryan Bolender, one of the lead researchers, noticed the Denisovan DNA in Melanesians wasn't as high as earlier studies claimed. That gap set off alarms. If it wasn't Neanderthal or Denisovan, what was it? Digging deeper, his team found about 12 megabases of genetic material. Tiny sequences that didn't line up with any known human group. These weren't errors or mutations. They looked inherited, like a signature from an ancestor we've never met. A ghost species, no bones, no name, just a fingerprint left behind in the code. For scientists used to working with fossils and fragments, this was different. This was the past reaching forward, not through stone or artifacts, but through living people. It was a revelation and a problem, because now they had to explain it. And science doesn't like mysteries without a face. Ghost relatives. What makes this so strange? Here's where it gets weird. Weird. Neanderthals? We've dug them up. Skulls, tools, even cave paintings. Denisovans? 
Not as much, just a finger bone and a couple of teeth from a cave in Siberia, but enough to sequence their genome. At least we can picture them. But this third species? Nothing. No jawbone, no burial site, not even a chipped rock to mark their presence. Just DNA. Traces of it tucked deep inside Melanesian genomes, like a whisper that shouldn't be there. That's what has scientists puzzled. How can a whole species vanish without a trace, yet leave enough behind to be detected? One theory is simple. Nature erased the evidence. The tropical climate in Melanesia eats away at bone. Heat, humidity, and volcanic activity. Bad news for preservation. Caves don't last here like they do in Europe. Another theory is more subtle. Maybe the bones are there, but they look too much like Denisovans or early modern humans to raise flags. Without DNA testing on every fossil, we could be missing them entirely. Whatever the reason, we're left with a mystery species that lived, mated, and then vanished, leaving only a genetic shadow behind. A shadow is now being chased by science. The known players, Neanderthals and Denisovans. Before we chase shadows, we need to understand the shapes we already know. Neanderthals were the tough ones, stocky, strong, built for cold. They roamed Europe and parts of Asia for hundreds of thousands of years. We know a lot about them, their tools, their burial practices, their art. Almost every non-African person alive today carries a small piece of their DNA, usually 1 to 3 percent. They weren't just brutes, they were survivors. Then there are the Denisovans, more mysterious. We've barely glimpsed them, just a finger bone and some teeth, all found in a single Siberian cave. But their DNA? It showed up loud and clear, especially in Melanesians and indigenous Australians, up to 6% in some cases. These two species, Neanderthals and Denisovans, interbred with modern humans as we spread across the globe. We expected that. What we didn't expect was a third contributor. And that's where the Melanesian genomes start to raise eyebrows. Because even after you account for Neanderthal and Denisovan influence, there's still something left. Something that doesn't belong to either. Something that could change the entire map of human ancestry. And the only place it lives? Inside the people of the Pacific. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The Science Behind the Find Finding a lost species in someone's blood isn't guesswork. It's math, algorithms, genomes, and a lot of staring at data. Most of us couldn't read if our lives depended on it. It starts with genetic sequencing. Scientists take DNA samples, blood, saliva, whatever they can get, and run them through machines that break it all down into base pairs. A, T, C, G. Billions of them. Each one is a part of the code that makes a person who they are. Then they compare those sequences to what we already know. The full genomes of modern humans, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. Think of it like scanning for familiar faces in a crowd. Except sometimes, you find a stranger. That's what happened in a 2019 study. Scientists analyzed DNA from over 1,500 people, including 35 Melanesians, and pulled out massive chunks of ancient DNA. Most matched what they expected, but about 12 megabases didn't. Too distinct to be random noise. Too structured to be contaminated. It was genetic material from something else. Something that had been part of the Melanesian lineage for tens of thousands of years and it hadn't been seen in any fossil or any other population on Earth. No bones, no problem, the fossil dilemma. Here's the part that keeps scientists up at night. We have the genes, but not the bones. In paleoanthropology, fossils are the gold standard. Without a skeleton, a skull, or even a tooth, naming a new human species is like solving a crime without a body. So far, this third species has left none just a trail of genetic breadcrumbs. Why? Melanesia isn't kind to fossils. Thick jungles, acidic soil, tropical rain, all of it erodes bone. The places where this species lived are among the hardest on Earth to excavate. Or maybe we've already found them, misidentified as Denisovans or early Homo sapiens. Without DNA tests on every fossil, we may never know. There's another theory, too. Maybe they didn't leave much small numbers, short-lived. 
Their genes survived through interbreeding, but their bones faded into the ground. Still, they're real enough to appear in genomes, and yet no archaeologist has ever held one in their hands. That silence is haunting. What Rogan's guests might say. Joe Rogan doesn't claim to have all the answers, but he's built a platform where questions like this land hard. If the ghost species discovery hit his desk, it would spark a deep dive with someone like Dr. Rhonda Patrick. She's been on the show talking about how Neanderthal DNA still affects modern human health, from immunity to mental health. Now, imagine adding a third species into that mix. Joe, if these genes survived in Melanesians, they had a purpose, she might say. Rogan would lean in, eyes wide. That's crazy. Jamie Metzl, the futurist, would likely say this is just the beginning, that we can use CRISPR and AI to trace and maybe even reconstruct parts of that unknown genome. Then there's Eddie Bravo. He's not a scientist, but he'd throw out the wild card. What if they didn't vanish? That's the JRE formula. Science, speculation, and a vibe that keeps you listening. Somewhere in the humid jungles of Melanesia, a story hides, not in temples or tombs, but in the bloodstream of living people. It's not a legend or a fossil, it's a fact, written in code, waiting to be understood. Joe Rogan's podcast gave it a stage, but the science is only just beginning. This third human species, this ghost in our genes, challenges everything we thought we knew about where we come from. So the next time someone tells you the past is behind us, remember this, some of it is still alive, walking, breathing, and waiting to be heard.